Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode, I really want to try and do a mission to EVE. I mean, it's still 276 days away as far as the transfer window is concerned, but if we take a look at our contracts, surface outposts on the moon, I mean, you know, five Kerbals shouldn't be too hard, right? You put a lander can on top of a hitchhiker container, it's not a big deal, but we're probably not going to use it. Um, Ferry two tourists. I hate tourists. Uh, plan a flag on Mimis. We've been doing that a lot recently. Uh, rescue Tandok. Mm, maybe. We probably do need more Kerbals. Um, Science Day from the surface of Minmus is, again, something that we've been doing recently. We've been focused on Minmus, really. Science Day from the surface of the moon. Eh, same thing. Um, position a satellite in a specific orbit of Minmus is interesting, especially since they're asking us to carry a materials bay. So that's a thing. And otherwise, put a Kerbal in orbit for three days. I'd rather build a space station for that. So I'll probably do that. It does give us a lot of science. Uh, science data from Duna. We're not at the transfer window to Duna yet. We're closer to the EVE transfer window, which brings us to this. Uh, we have to get into this particular orbit, which is really high, and add a specific longitude of ascending node and argument of periapsis. And um, we have to have a mystery goo, materials bay, thermometer, but they pay us well. So this is interesting, uh, but let's, let's pick up all the interesting things since we can. The only uh, contract we have here is Explore Duna, and so we know when we're going to do that. So uh, position the satellite, uh, Kerbal in orbit for 30 days, yeah, we should do that. Uh, specific orbit of Minmus. In fact, let's try and uh, use the same mission to uh, send the probe to Minmus as we do for EVE. And with the intention of bringing them both back, the Mystery Goo Unit uh, Materials Bay would be good to bring back home. And by the same token, this Materials Bay should probably be brought back too, uh, so that we can get maximum science out of it. Of course, we could, once we get a science lab, we could milk science, but we don't have a science lab yet. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to test our EVE mission on the mission to Minmus, and we'll see how it works out. Now, I already, it, it's a reconfigured uh, version of the Duna probe. Now, the Duna probe's issue last time was that, uh, first of all, we lost communication because we didn't have the tracking system upgrade, but this time that should be fine. Uh, but the parachute failed. And it uh, turns out I needed an engineer to fix that, um, which wasn't going to be feasible. But, uh, yeah, so we're hoping that we're not going to have a random parachute failure to EVE. On the bright side, transfers to EVE are much quicker than transfers to Kerbin. Uh, sorry, to Duna. Uh, though on the way back, I don't know, we might... Uh, it, it still should be a quicker trip, uh, around trip altogether. So hopefully we won't have that problem. The problem here is that this is the biggest heat shield we've got. A 1.25 meter heat shield. And, you know, that's like barely covering the bottom of this and you can sort of imagine this is not that this is not a capsule shape so ideally I would like better heat shields when do we get better heat shields this is a good question solar panel wise if it worked for Duna it'll definitely work for a trip to Eve well there's a uh, 3.75 so this must have yeah this one has a 1.875 meter so Tell you what, um, what we'll do is we'll try and get some science from from Minmus with that probe and bring it back. And um, we'll see if we can get 18 science without uh, actually bringing it back. We'll use that to unlock this. Otherwise, we'll try and bring it back through reentry and see what happens before committing our science for that. We'll probably want that heat shield anyway, but yeah. So that's the plan. Let's go to Minmus with that probe and launch. Our bigger rockets, which actually the bomb this... We, we have newer engines that might be worthy of consideration. Though ultimately what I think is going to happen is a skiff is going to be... or uh, two skiffs would be a good replacement for these. Maybe with some small SRBs. I don't know. Um, I wish we had thinner SRBs, to be honest. So that you could have like a Delta II configuration with nine of them around. 
and it wouldn't look ridiculous. But anyway. This is not obvious already. I'm, I am conscious of the look of my rockets. Really, we could dump the fairing. And separation. So yeah, this should be pretty familiar. I'll extend the antennae now. But we now have the Sinus Junior here. It used to be just this upper part that was the probe. Okay, so we are in orbit. And Minmus is there. Uh, well, off-plane transfer doesn't look like it's the best thing ever. It'll take us quite a while to get there. We'll have to wait till Minmus comes all the way around to here. Um, 23 days. Well, I mean, we're planning to time warp to that, uh, that EVE transfer window anyway. So we're not doing anything for the next 23 days. I guess we can make it happen. We have to get into this orbit. Maybe something like that and then just get into orbit. We have a lot of Delta V. After all, we're supposed to go to Eve with this. Got 3,270 there. I probably shouldn't plan too much ahead. My actual transfer is bound to be a little bit off. But, you know, eventually we can do something like this. And let's see just how much it'll cost. 265, I mean, not bad at all. We can probably do it all one step. Uh, though, of course, if we really want the juicy materials-based science, we should probably go low over Mimis, but we'll fulfill the contract first. Okay, we've got something plotted around Minmus for the orbital burn, but let's make sure that we get power and everything. Okay, it's recharging. So we should be good to go. It's a long trip out and actually our orientation to the sun might change. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, well, it's not quite the target orbit, but it's close. Let me see if I can shift that up there. Before we do this, maybe we should quickly check. It does agree that we have all the things. Yep, okay, I just need one materials bay anyway. Well, and antenna and power, of course. Let's boost up a little bit so we have a tangency on the opposite side that we can work with. Well, while we're here, let me see. Have we done the goo? Well, we haven't recovered goo from here, so record data. All right, we fulfilled the requirements. We've got that contract done. Um, observe material bay. Well, we're not getting anything for transmitting it. We have to recover this. So keep record. Well, that should be low over nine kilometers. Pretty sure nothing on Nimbus is that high, so hopefully safe. Okay, quickly, we need to get the goo. Observe mystery goo. 22.4. Keep. Record. Okay, so we're keeping all that science. And we are going to bring it back home. I mean, even though we have the data here, these samples, we have these samples. I suppose that isn't just in the probe core. We actually do have to bring back the container, right? Right? I'm going to go with that assumption. And let's see about breaking orbit here. It so happens that uh, we've got our apoapsis in the right place. That's good. We don't need to set that as a target. We burn out like that. Of course, this means that we have way too much delta V, but we didn't even need the two extra stages. The terrier itself was sufficient. But again, this is testing the whole Eve proposition. It's been a pretty straightforward mission so far. Of course, not a real test of like the ability of the parachute to continue functioning. But again, even the Duna mission was longer than expected. We actually had to 
make a whole orbit around the sun before properly hitting Duna because we missed the first pass, right? So maybe spending all that time in interplanetary orbit was what did the parachute in. Okay, well, it's time to dump stuff. Um, I'm gonna... I don't know, can I arm the parachute? If I deploy chute, that's arming it, right? This is important. I'm obviously gonna have to retract the antennae if I want them back. Alright, separation. And uh, even this one has to be separated. Okay, surface negative. Okay, antenna retraction time. Retract. And retract. We still seem to have communication. But I don't know how long that's gonna last. Can I just close the doors on here? Let's just close doors. Might be marginally safer that way. Well, in terms of protecting the Science Junior, it's doing pretty well so far. Yep, it's definitely handling the business. So that's interesting. Maybe we don't need those ex uh, the larger heat shields after all. That would be inconvenient anyway because we'd need bigger fairing and everything. Okay, now what about my pre-arming of the parachute? And is that gonna be okay? I sure don't have communicate. Well, we do have communication. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, that deployed a lot sooner than I would like it to, but it's holding. Okay, and what velocity does it get us to? Six. Six meters per second. No problems. Okay, splash down. Recover. So we got the science we wanted, but I don't think we need to spin it on those heat shields. Um, yep. Okay, actually I've decided to knock out this put a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days thing. And I'm going to also pick up the build a new orbital station around Kerbin and do both at once. And let me go to the VAB and show you what I mean. So I can't resist changing things up. So even though this is based on the station that we sent to Minmus, it's obviously quite different. First of all, our launcher is very different. So I decided to try and use these Soyuz tanks. Though it's a bit of an experiment because we're adding these fuel tanks to the bottom. Now the Soyuz tanks have their own built-in separatrons. And we need to see whether adding this tank is going to cause a problem for those. But otherwise, we have the Bobcat engines there. That's a new addition we haven't used before. Uh, probably not the best, most efficient setup here, but it's more of a case of trying out new things. We're using the Twitch engines here instead of using the Terrier engines that we used on the Minmus station. We removed one of these fuel tanks, we removed all of the uh, liquid fuel specialized tanks since this contract doesn't require us to carry 6,000 units of liquid fuel. Um, we have half the solar panel re actually and otherwise though we have the same uh, life support modules all the same life support modules in here as well again the supplementary oxygen tanks and nitrogen tanks and also food and water up here now because those used to be on um, the liquid fuel containers that we had ringing around the Minmus station uh, a little bit of uh, sort of dangerous situation. We are gonna send a Kerbal up with this one and the Kerbal will have to abort if necessary but uh, basically the pod is equipped with RCS alone. It has no service module and so it has this mod propellant here and also full mod propellant there, full shielding, uh, food, water and oxygen and once we get to orbit and if this all works out the the contract should be fulfilled as far as the, uh, what you call it, five day thing. No, not five day thing, five Kerbal station thing. And then there's the 30 day uh, stay. And I don't know whether I want to uh, do our little experiment before or after we finish those 30 days. But basically, I want this to try and redock over here. And that's an interesting little thing. But, uh, yep. So that's an idea. 
Will that be difficult? I don't know. Hopefully the thruster placement isn't too bad. I think it's Philippe's turn. So Philippe is going in the command pod because if things blow up, the command pod can still parachute back down. And let's see if uh, this works. I should auto strut these guys to have his part. And I think that's all I want to do. We haven't an eye. We have all the other things. Fewer batteries, but that's all right. And as far as life support's concerned, two years of food, three years of water, three years of oxygen, ideal living space, comfort is modest, pressurized is yes, duration nine years. Radiation, of course, we've got shielding. Um, reliability, eight malfunctions per year though. Hmm. Well, redundancy is great though, that's nice. Landing, I have no idea. I, I don't know what the, exactly these numbers mean, but 7 on life support, 7 on attitude, control 4 on communication. So we have 4 redundant communication thingamajigs, I guess. We have 2 antennae, and then we have the co uh, cores, uh, probe cores antenna, and then the pods antenna. If that's what you call... I mean, obvious. Uh, I wonder if that goes down if we change our location. Let's say I switch this to... Jewel. No, that doesn't go down. Now, even though some of our antennae are not jewel capable antenna. Alright, that's a curiosity too. But alright, here we go. Let's try this out. Okay. Everything is on. Data up. And ignition and launch. While we're going up, always a good sign. Okay, moment of truth, separation. Uh, separated fine. Well, that one was a little bit unflippy. Wonder why it was unflippy. The others flipped much more vigorously. That's a nice plume on this skipper. Okay, well I want to deorbit this. This stage, so... Separation. And twitches. Well, we'll get to 100 kilometers. And then we have to circularize. Okay, prograde. Oh, occluded by a celestial body. You know, that's fine. We know. it's. It, you mean it's dark. Yes, it's dark. Okay. Ignition. I was afraid they were broken or something. I've got surplus liquid fuel. I think I forgot to dump something. Oh, the locked liquid fuel here. Forgot about that. No, uh, let's just lock it so it doesn't look like I've got more than I... Ought to have. Okay, well that's good enough orbit. And we fulfilled the new orbital station around Kerbin. And now it doesn't really have a countdown for put a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days. That's annoying. Uh, I'm more used to contracts like that actually having a countdown thing. I guess that's not one of these contracts. Um, I'm just wondering whether we should try and redock Philippe or not. I guess we'll wait. Let's go back to Space Center. I wonder why Philippe's name's in lowercase here. Radiation 7%. So uh, somebody said that there was a setting. Uh, I don't think I can access the settings here. Uh, that there was a difficulty setting. And I think I must have turned on uh, lifetime radiation because um, it has max shielding. Philippe just got up there. Um, Kerbalism. Yeah, lifetime radiation is, is, uh, is highlighted. So they do have lifetime radiation, so we really need to pay attention to the whole radiation thing. 
it uh, it does not reset. So good, that's full realisms. That's full realisms. Uh, coronal mass inject ejection hit Kerbin system. Okay. Uh, solar storm in progress. We'll monitor Philippe. He's only got 1% stress right now. And again, we have full shielding on the station. And on his pod. He's still technically in the pod and not in the rest of the station, but that has full shielding too. And tentatively, it looks like that's working out. Yeah, the storm is over and Philippe did not gain any new radiation. Okay, yes. Put a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days is fulfilled. We got some signs from that too. So, alright. Now we'll do the docking test and then bring Philippe back. Philippe's been all alone for 30 days. Hopefully no lasting psychological damage. Okay. So this docking port, once it stops wiggling, decouple. Okay, no, I want to go over here with Philippe. All right. Let's target this crew hatch. Set as target R. Okay, RCS test. Oop, we've got a sound. Okay. Now, Smart ASS has a nifty feature where you can hold negative parallel, but instead I'll just try and do it manually myself. And then if I get into too much trouble, then I'll, then I'll cheat. Uh, then I'll use Smart ASS's help. Not, not the docking autopilot, though. That's a, that's a cheat and a half right there. We do have to watch out for a mod propellant, considering that's also going to be used for deorbiting. By the way, the thrusters are tuned to 25% thrust limit. They're way overpowered for this little pod otherwise. Really wish we had smaller thruster pods. Uh, I don't know, it seems pretty good to me, and MegJeb says 133 millimeter closest approach distance. Which should be enough for magnetism to do its thing. I could adjust it, but nope, doesn't look like I need to. All right, redocking was successful, so this little arrangement works fine. Uh, let us undock and bring Philippe back. Philippe never actually got to enjoy all the room on the station, but Kerbalism thinks he did. How many units of mop propellant does it take to deorbit? That's a good question. It'd be a little bit higher than that, but we're talking about maybe 16 units of mod propellants altogether. The less mod pro propellant we have, the better off it'd be because it'd be lighter. So yeah, but 16 units is a good estimate for how much we need to reserve for the deorbiting with this system in particular. You'll have to forgive the little clipping here. I could have kept them out. It probably wouldn't have made too much of a difference. But I wanted them neater. What I really need is the just the cylindrical RCS container. I, I didn't have that. Once we unlock it, we'll replace these with that. Two tons vessel mass, but we're carrying two parachutes, so it's fine. It looks rough, but the G-forces are just at 1.9 right now. Okay, parachutes. And we don't need RCS on anymore. Okay, and recover. So, another successful mission for Philippe. Uh, we didn't get much science out of that. We got some funds back. And no experience gain for Philippe, even though uh, he had the longest stint in orbit yet. Alright, we have time warp to the EVE window. And in the meantime, a treadmill malfunctioned on Minma Station 1. We can still repair it. And a solar panel malfunctioned on Kerbin Station 1. We can still repair it. So it sure sounds like we need to send an engineer to both stations uh, so that they can be repaired. Of course, we have plenty of redundancy. I think there are two treadmills on each station, for instance. One in each hitchhiker container. And, of course, plenty of solar panels. Eight on 
Minimus Station and four main ones on uh, Kerbin Station. There are also smaller ones as backups. But anyway, uh, so we probably don't have to deal with that for now. Let us uh, roll out our EVE mission, which we had already tested around Minmus, and see how it goes. Okay, we are go for launch, and launch. Electric charge-wise, we're a little bit tight. Of course, we are getting closer to the sun on this mission, so maybe it'll be alright. The comms are identical to the comms we had on the Duna probe, so maybe that'll be enough. I hope so. It's not as bad a situation as it is with Duna, after all. For our next Duna probe, we should probably up the comms. We did rely on Kerbin being close to Duna to successfully get the Duna science. Of course, we had the parachute problem on the way back, but... Okay, we're going off the coast now. As usual with this rocket, since it's nearly an SSTO. Okay, uh, we can coast a little bit, so stay separation, but not ignition. Fairing separation. Sorry, I keep forgetting to set that to clamshells. I don't mean it to go all confetti on us. Okay, and we have to remember we have to get into a specific orbit around EVE. It does read that we have the required science instruments, so that's good. I've definitely had a situation where one of the contracts had a glitch and it didn't read the proper instruments, but that was because I had an alternate, alternate mystery goo unit, I think it was, from a mod. And that mystery goo unit apparently was not considered satisfactory for a contract. Anyway, so it's always good to check. Okay, we have a very nice situation. In fact, our ascending node is right there. And as we get closer to EVE, of course, it, it perturbs that. But uh, we don't need to do a mid-course correction as long as we do this burn right. And it's only 1,013 meters per second, which is super. Uh, the required orbit is this big one here, which is annoying as all heck. Because, you know, it's nicer to capture close to EVE. I think I still will. I think I still will. So, um... Let's see. I don't see how we're going to fix it coming in here. So maybe we'll do a mid-course adjustment after all. That's probably the best thing to flatten it out. Um, we could build in some flattening here and just do some normal burn with, as part of this big burn. Maybe that's because we're close to the descending node. So this might be the best time to do it anyway. Ooh. I say that, but sure not giving me options. It actually might be better if we are inclined a certain way that at least allows us to get our apoapsis to touch that orbit. Okay, well we're gonna have to do some work once we get there. I don't see an easy way to handle it right now. Uh, we'll do this. We're not going to do any make course adjustment. We'll get there and we'll figure it out with our overwhelming Delta V. All right. That uh, should be about right. Off we go to Eve. Okay, that's probably close enough. We don't really need to get into the atmosphere or anything. And once we get there... We'll capture first and then figure it out. There'll be some unpleasant burns, I'm sure. Like, probably one out here. Wherever this orbit crosses that blue line is where we want to do. Oh, great, it's all the way out here. I mean, all the way back close to Eve is a bad place for it to be. But let's just check how bad it's going to be. Mm-hmm. All right, how much is that? Oh, only 285. I guess that's not too bad. It could be worse. All right, on to Eve. Let's see if we keep communications. Oh, it occurs to me we might hit the Duna window before we get there. Yeah, all right. Well, this is what Kerbal Alarm Clock is for, folks. So, I'm sorry. We're going to have to figure out what happens with this Eve probe after we do the Duna mission, probably missions, probably more than one. And yeah, that, that'll probably be in the next episode as well. But I have to work on my Duna mission first. 
So we're going to pay attention to this. Not, not uh, right there. Let's get it out into interplanetary space. And then I'll go with the SOI change as when I pay attention to it next. And we'll have to wait until the next episode to see what happens. Cliffhanger. Not node. SOI changed alarm. 177 days. And so Duna first next time, at least the launch. We won't actually see that mission fulfilled until after we deal with this. And then we'll check out this mission. And then there's also the component where this has to come back, or at least we want to bring back the Science Junior and Goo information. So we're going to try and have it come back to Kerbin. And then after this one comes back, the Duna mission also has to try and come back. So it's all complicated. But next time we'll have some interplanetary stuff, and that should be fun. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.